All right, everybody. So um, I'm going to make a couple of videos, one to focus on the web server configurations, right? We're going to be checking those vulnerabilities there. We need to be looking at our firewall, directory browsing, log file locations, that FTP service stuff that we did back in 2.2, SMTP and loose lipped error messages. Now, like I said yesterday, there are out of these six system configuration vulnerabilities that I want you to be checking on that I need screenshots on with all that stuff, there are only actually going to be four vulnerabilities. So in this video, we're going to be looking at target windows 01 and kind of toggling back and forth between target windows 01 and our local device or our local computer, um, obviously still in that virtual machine to see where some of those vulnerabilities are at. Okay. So just, you know, double checking when we look at target windows 01, there's some things that we need to, uh, to be paying attention to when we go into that server manager, that IIS manager, when you're making any of those changes, got to make sure that you're in target windows 01. Okay. And then my next video is going to be looking at these different exploits, stuff that we did in 2.3. So it's a little bit more fresh in our brain when we're typing in those script vulnerabilities there um, and looking in Wireshark. Okay. But like I said, this one is all about the web server. So what we need to make sure that we are doing is looking in this connections folder here. So we've opened up the lab, we've gone through the planning process. Now we're going to start implementing and taking screenshots of this. So here I'm looking at my connections folder and then I need to make sure target windows 01 is open up. I'm connecting to that server. That's my web server. That's where we're storing a lot of this different information there. And of course we want to make sure that all of this stuff is super secure, right? We don't want any randos going in there and taking a look at where we store our log files um, or if they can transfer files onto that web server, that's going to be a major problem for our company. So right now it's taking a while, but we are, we're going to do that pen testing um, just to make sure and look at, we're going to help out this bikes, boards and beyonds, help them out. Where are some of those vulnerabilities? Okay. All right, take a second here. Well, let's get connected. All right, we are connected here into our, um, this target Windows 01. And the other thing that you can always look at is that, hey, is that blue bar up there? Then I know that I'm on that, you know, machine within the machine, if you will. So I'm looking at my server, trying to find some information. Now, the first thing that we are going to go check on is our, for our system, vulnerability is looking at our firewall settings here. So this is stuff that we kind of did back in unit one. Um, but on this server, it's going to look a little bit different here. So the first thing that we are going to do is we got to take a screenshot and find that the evidence of, all right, is our firewall running? Is it not? So what we can do is we can go in and search for in that little search here. If I'm going to move that around real quick, we can search for our Firewall. So just in that search windows, I'm going to type in firewall. And I can just open up that firewall setting that we have there, our desktop application Windows Firewall with advanced security. We've been here before. We've seen this stuff before. And we got to remember, too, that all of these things we're just checking, we're taking screenshots of. So I would definitely take a screenshot of this page because it's see, we can see that, okay, our Windows firewall is off um, all across the board. So this is our evidence that we are having some problems and we need to go make that recommendation to actually go in and turn on our firewall, okay? So we'll go in now into this window, Windows firewall. We can see that we can go into those firewall properties. Yep, we can check that our firewall state is on. I'll go in and apply that, click OK, and I'm, again, I'm taking screenshots as this process goes. And the other thing that we want to go in and look at is that control panel. Again, stuff that we bid, did back in Unit 1, so I'm just going to type in control panel, again, that desktop application. And if I search in this control panel for firewall again, you click on that Windows firewall, and we see that... Um, we're not using the recommended settings. So I went in and changed some things, but you know what, let's go in and just click on using recommended settings. And now we're all connected across the board. So that's gonna be our first vulnerability. And again, you're taking screenshots of these things. You're going through 
and, and adding that into your report. All right, booyah, firewall is done. So I'm gonna cross that off my list. Now my next vulnerability that I'm gonna look at is this directory browsing, okay? And our directory browsing is gonna be a problem. If someone can go in and you know type in our IP address and see where all of our files are at, all right, well, that's gonna be an issue here. So I'm going to go in and um, minimize my target windows 01. And I'm gonna minimize this and I'm not gonna be in my virtual machine because I'm wanting to connect to that server with the IP address of 172.30.0.15. So again, I'm gonna go in, let's just minimize that little guy and I will open up and we can just do Internet Explorer connection and that's no problem. So I need to check and I need to see that there's evidence that my directory browsing is enabled and I can go in and navigate into this, that web server. So I'm gonna type in that web server's address, 172.30.0.15 and if I go in and press enter, I can see that directory browsing is enabled. I've got a bunch of different folders with some different dates there, all of that stuff. Now this is making our site very vulnerable. If we can go in and look at these different log files um, and, and go in and look at some of that information. So then what we need to do now is jump back into our server, jump back into that virtual machine and make sure that we disable that directory browsing. Okay, so I'm gonna minimize that screen. My internet's slow here in my parents' house, so sorry about that. Um, but I'm gonna go back into my target windows 01. We're gonna cancel this here. All right, I'm back in my target windows 01, that web server. And so now I'm gonna go and go into my server manager and I need to check and disable that directory browsing. Now, do I know that this is something that is not just like in your brain that you know everything about disabling directory browsing? No, we did this stuff like a month ago. Okay, so it's going to be very, very helpful, very, very helpful for you to go back into our PLTW website and we can go in and use this search function to help us out. So I might wanna type in disable directory browsing and I know that that's kind of in my 2.2 type of thing. So I'm gonna analyze that server and all right, sweet. I can go in and click on this disable directory browsing option. And this is gonna help me walk through that different, those different steps there. Okay, so I need to open up. I'm gonna expand those different sites and I need to go in and make sure that this is all disabled there. Go in and take a look at all of these different things to make sure that we can't go in and uh, and take a look at, at some of those files in that browsing option. So I am back into my IIS manager. Again, make sure that you're in target Windows 01. I click on my internet for my IIS manager, which is gonna configure what that web server is looking at, what it's all about. And we gotta make sure that this IIS is open I need to make sure that I've got my target Windows 01 selected. That's what I'm wanting to go in and configure and make sure that we're making some changes too. And since we're focused now on directory browsing, we're gonna be in this IIS part. And if I double click on directory browsing here, I can see that over on my right hand side, this is where we gotta go and take a look at this. I need to make sure that I click on that disable button. So I disable that directory browsing option, okay? So that's gonna be our second Part, our directory browsing and again you're taking screenshots of all of these different things and we're good to go and then the third thing that we are going to be going in and checking taking screenshots of is going to be this directory um, excuse me this these log file locations okay so let's go in again I'm going to minimize this screen I can kind of close out of this IIS manager and I am headed back to my normal not virtual machine to go check out my log file locations. All right, again, back to my normal device, we'll call it, or my, my local site or my local host. I typed in that IP address of my web server, okay, 172.30.0.15. And then I added that logs. Now there was a button to click also in our directory browsing that we saw that this was a problem. And we can see that, uh-oh, yeah, I got my 
my log files here. So you can click on those log files if you want. You can really open up those specific text files and those log files to see the type of information that is going to be there. But at the end of the day, we don't have to go into that much detail because we can see that, yes, our log files are vis visible. And this also is representing another vulnerability. So in order to go in and make those changes, now changes, we're, we're identifying things on our local site, but then we're making changes in our target Windows 01 because we're, we're making those changes in our specific web server. All right, so back again to my web server I go, and I'm going to go back into that IIS manager. Okay, so my tools, again, I'm back opening that up for my IIS manager, I'm gonna kind of resize this, click on my target Windows 01, and now we're just wanting to change what that site or where we are saving these files. So I'm gonna change that log file location so it's not set to the default location. Okay, that's one thing, again, that we did back in our moving our log files. This activity 223, all of these options are gonna be super helpful for you. Okay, we're moving that log file location to a different directory, okay? So we don't want it to be default, we want it to be somewhere else. Okay, so back into my site I go, all right, I can see that this is the default, the system drive, INET pub logs, and this is just where we're saving all of this stuff, right? So I'm gonna go in and click browse, and then you can add a folder of your choosing to be hidden, you know, somewhere else. Sure, I'll put it in FTP rules. I'm going to go in and make a new folder. So it's a folder within a folder. And I'm going to say top secret. Change the file name um, to something else. Not my top secret that you have. You can add some different things in there. So I know that you are, uh, you're doing this on your own and not just taking screenshots of my stuff. So now I've saved it as top secret, um, or I've changed that directory location for that stuff. And then we're just going to go in and click apply. Okay, now that is going to be our log file number two. You can go back in and check this different type of stuff. Um, now it's going to be a little bit different because we're using a virtual machine and it's not like super 100% real, but I, we need to see that we're changing that directory of where we are at or where we're saving those log files. All right, so that's step number three. My log file locations are taken care of. And then the last thing that we are going to go in and double check to make sure is uh, is good to go are these file transfer protocol services that we have. Okay, so again, back into I'll minimize that back into my um, normal my local machine. So I got to minimize my server here. Back into my normal machine that I go. I'm going to minimize all this stuff, and this is where we're using that FileZilla thing. So I'm going in and I need to remove the FTP. 223 is huge for all of us. All right. So we can go in, um, we can check to see if we actually, if we actually are um, able to transfer those files first. Before you remove things, let's double check to make sure, okay, what's, uh, what's going on here? Is, is this something that we need to actually go in and fix? So in my FileZilla, I'll make that full screen. Our host, the one that we are wanting to connect to, we need to connect to that server. So again, that IP address is 172.30.0.15. And if you look back into our different activities that we have, our username is just going to be anonymous. Okay, so then I'm going to go in and connect there. And I can see here. Right, my local site is the one that I'm on right now, and I'm able to connect. I don't see any error messages, okay? I can go in, look at this remote site, my target Windows 01, and I can see a bunch of this stuff. Now, that's a problem. If if we don't have this file transfer, I can move one file. Maybe I have a malicious file here on my local site. I'm an evil human, and I want to mess up the web server. I can go in and just really quickly transfer those different files there. Um, by just, you know, dragging and dropping essentially, right, if I had a file and I can just move that over here like what we did in our different activities. So we see that we've got a connection, which is a huge vulnerability. Again, you can transfer those malicious files, which could cause a lot of problems for us. So now I got to go back to our trusty server. All right, I'm going to open up that connection again, double checking that I have that blue bar up at the top. And now I need to 
you click no. And now I need to go in and disable that file transfer. I, I'm making the changes on my web server. So I need to remove some of these roles here. So I'm gonna go click on my manage button and I'm gonna remove these roles and features. So before we begin, um, we've got to make some updates here. We're gonna be clicking next. Mine looks a little bit weird because my computer is so small, but I'm gonna make sure that I have my target Windows 01 as that secured server. That should automatically be there. That's only one computer that we found. And then I'm gonna go click on my server roles. Now this is where we're gonna go in and actually make these changes to our specific web server. So taking a look here, I need to open up that carrot for my web server, and this is where I can make some modifications. Now I see that there's a check mark. I can transfer files. That server is available. So like our instructions tell us from a, you know a month ago, we got to make sure that we go in and actually uncheck that FTP server. Okay, so I'm going to go in, uncheck that, and then you should be able to go in um, on the bottom right hand corner. Click on next. I'm I'm going to do that quick. And you'll just go through and kind of click next and kind of finish up that process there. And then you can go back in if your heart desires. Um, I would if I were you, but you can go back in and then just kind of go test, um, test that file transfer. So then I would go back in, minimize my screen, open up that FileZilla, maybe try to reconnect to, um, you know, reconnect that stuff. And then I can see, um, you know, in time, I need to close out and all that good stuff. But since we since I disabled that, I will not have a connection, it'll have that message, like it has before. Um, like we did before you took screenshots a couple weeks ago, that you can't even connect to that server because we we disabled all of that stuff. That's exactly what we want to go in and do. All right, so I'm done with my file transfer. I've disabled those things. Now, th these are the four things that we actually need to go in and make changes. You need to search for SMTP. You need to search for these loose-lipped error messages. Now, these things are already um, are already secured. You don't have to go in and make any specific changes to that, but I still need to have screenshots of what did you do, okay? So going back into my um, activity here, typing in SMTP, and there's not a whole lot of stuff that you need to do with this. When we go in and secure the server, um, this is just a small little component that you need to, to look at. Um, so it's going to be right in this mail service section. You need to obviously be in your secure server, and you're going to click on this PowerShell icon in the taskbar, and then you'll be opening up this Netstat um, network statistics prompt to see, you know, what are you connected to. So uh, the other thing that I would recommend doing, find out, we, we're going to click on this um, Excel spreadsheet here and see if it's listening to a specific port. Again, these things are, uh, port number 25 is what you're going to be searching for in your network statistics output. Now, if there are things that if, if it doesn't show up well we already have our um we already have our stuff done for the smtp uh, work that you need to do so just take a screenshot yep you tried you have that powershell um that you typed in whoopsies that you that you typed in your different stuff and we're okay there no, no changes that need to be made. And then again, with this loose lipped error messages, you can go into that login machine again and just type in that exact URL. There should be an error message that shows up that says, hey, nope, don't have connection. We were not able to do that type of work. So I just need a screenshot of that. So those are the, you know, the things that you are going to need to have in your web server stuff we're again checking out that server manager and i do understand guys it's hard and it, it's been a minute since we've been here so looking and searching using that directory searching in that project or the 2.2 stuff is going to be really huge now making sure with every single thing that you are doing you can just take screenshots of this stuff and throw that into a powerpoint presentation a google slides whatever you want to do you need to talk about what did you do 
discuss what you checked, and if there needs to be a recommendation, recommendation is key, if there needs to be a recommendation of the changes that need to be made, then go in and do that. And you're gonna elaborate more in your presentation about the configuration that you think bikes, boards, and beyond should actually go in and do. Make sure to uh, send me an email if you have any questions. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can, but good luck.